guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to hear an email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, I'm guessing he's probably in his 30s or so. And he shares his story from when he was 27 when he met his now ex-fiancé. An ex-fiancé who at the time claimed she was rededicating her life to God. Not dedicating, rededicating. After, as you can probably guess, some activities that were more associated with the devil. And you're going to see, guys, that this guy, for a reason, she, he ends the, the engagement with her. However, along the way, he makes a whole lot of mistakes. A whole lot of mistakes that, that really boil down to desperation and lack of experience. Two things that will torpedo any relationship with either a good woman or certainly a not good woman. And I'll be very going to go over here, guys, just to show you, obviously, where he went wrong so he can learn, as well as many of you guys. And it really boils down to, and I say, I say this quite often, because we, we, we want to be entertained here, but also learn something along the way, that, guys, if you are a relationship guy, you know you, know you are, and you, one day you want to have a family and kids, and you, and you watch this to learn something, to protect yourself, to ensure the best possible odds that you can have what you want one day, fair enough. You must understand that you've got to get some experience along the way. When you're young, yes, you should be dedicating yourself to your grind, your purpose, establishing yourself, whether it be working hard in school to get the good grades, dedicating yourself to the trade you're trying to, to excel at. Then when you're in the workforce, saving money and all that. But along the way, and also going to the gym and exercise, along the way, if you're a relationship guy, you got to get some experience, at least some. So that way when you are ready – say late 20s or so, early 30s, the first girl comes your way, you can actually know what you're doing. That you're not going to just, the first pretty girl pays attention to you and you're just going to just, boom, drop everything for her and behave like all these guys. Because without experience and when you're desperate, you're going to act like all these guys and they're going to eat you alive. And it's not going to, even a gal that would make a good girlfriend or wife one day, if that's what you want to do, will be turned off by that behavior. And you're going to see that in the story here. Desperation and lack of experience. So, any guys, stick around. This is an entertaining one. It definitely covers areas that will definitely give you guys a good laugh. Because I'm trying not to reveal too much in the beginning. And uh, hopefully we can help this guy out. So, he says here, hello, SSM. I think it would be educational to list situations equivalent to a woman requesting an open relationship. Because many women are so deviously charming and manip manipulative that it can be hard to spot. Well, I don't think it, yes, they are, many can be very charming and manipulative, but I don't think a lot of these things are too hard to spot. It just takes experience and, and some common sense. I'm sharing my story because I realize now that this is what I face from my ex fiance. I'll refer to her as Mitri. I first met her during a job interview I had at a hospital where she was an administrator. Hospital, huh? We all know who works at the hospital and what those types are like. Already, this is setting the stage. Three weeks later, I end up getting a better job in a different state than the one I interviewed for. And about a week afterwards, one month after we initially met, we started becoming a long-distance couple, residing 1,200 miles apart. At the time, I was 27 and she was 29. Smack! One month, one month after you met her... You're already in an exclusive relationship and a long-distance relationship? Why? Why would you do that? What, maybe you were on four dates at best? And you were traveling and getting a different job? Why don't you just, you moved and find a girlfriend there? Where are you going to be living? That's crazy to me. Desperation and lack of experience, guys. The first pretty girl is going to pay attention to him, boom. And notice he said she's 29. 29, what happens at 29? They know they're turning 30 soon. Women fear 30 because it's society tells them you're a big giant loser if you're not married by 30. And so she's like, nice guy. I'm, I'm roping him in. And look what happened. I interrupt because I got to teach, guys. <clears throat> we saw each other in person approximately once every two to four months. And she met my parents early in our relationship. Every two to four months, what's the point? At the time, our salaries were comparable. I made about 40% more. Well, that's not comparable. If, if you made 5% more, your salaries are comparable. If you made 40% more, it's not comparable. <laughs> 
that I was on track to have a salary roughly 10 times hers in six years. I mentioned this because I really didn't care about the money, but I assumed that the others who knew our relationship did. Bro, obviously on your first or second date, she pr you probably told her your goals, where you want to be in life, and she figured out real quick, whoa, this guy's going to be pulling in some serious dough, and that's why she roped you in. It's not an accident. And she knew you were a nice guy, relationship guy. Uh, she was the daughter of a she was the daughter of a local pastor. <laughs> this keeps getting better and better. And noted she had rededicated her life to the Lord after wait for it being wild in college. So she I guess was once dedicated, then was not dedicated, and now she's rededicating herself to Jesus. It's a stereotype, but it's true. A lot of these gals that were born, they were daughters of pastors or grew up in super religious households. It's so strict and constricting that they just go buck wild. It's amazing. Uh, I was a virgin and expressed my desire to wait until marriage to lose my virginity, which we agreed to adhere to, since she expressed a desire to not have sex again until after marriage. Well, she's probably still sore from all her days dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight during college, so she needed a break. But I'm not quite believing that uh, <laughs> she's really taking a break. And by the way, okay, he says he's a virgin. Now, he says that this is by choice, and I respect that. You virgins out there, and I know there are some of you out there watching this right now, they're doing it by choice. That's your business. Don't let anybody judge you, give you a hard time about it. It's your fucking business. But that will be challenging because there are good women out there that, yes, they do want to have sex. Okay? So that, that's going to limit some things. Or some women that are like, okay, fine, I'll just, you know, have my fun on the side. Uh, although I was frustrated with the long distance, I tolerated it because I was smitten. Shocker. Why, again, why couldn't you meet, met a chick where you worked and lived? Why? Lack of experience and desperation. This is the point I'm trying to, the whole theme of this whole fucking video, guys. Had he got some experience early on, he'll be so desperate. Women, no desperate. And that is a turnoff to them. She was my third relationship and first lo lasting longer than six weeks. She was my first kiss and I was in love. Smack! At 27 years old, this chick he met was his first kiss. And the longest relationship he had was six weeks. Lack of experience and desperation. Right here. This is where guys fuck up. And she knew it. I guarantee you totally. Oh, you're, you're my first kiss, by the way. The luck he'd have to tell her. Ay, ay, ay. And guys, yes, again. I'm, if you're a relationship guy... You got as as uncomfortable as it is, and and me awkward and shy, and you admit to yourself you don't have a whole lot of game when you're young. Take action. Join a gym. Get your body in shape. Talk to people. Practice anything so that you're not like this when you're older and want to one day hopefully meet a gal you want to that you want to start a life with because you want a family and kids. After 14 months into our relationship, I bought an engagement ring. Smack. Of course you did. 14 months. Shit, I'm surprised you didn't do that after <laughs> six months. It's nuts. And proposed during the next time that we were together. To my horror, she freaked out and didn't give me an answer. Yes, she did. That was her answer. Guys, if she is in love with you, she's going to be like, yes, and cry and hug you and kiss you and all that bullshit, you know, that you may have witnessed or see it on TV or movies. That, that That's one area. If a woman's in love with you, she's going to be give a positive response when you pop the question. She's not going to freak out and run away. That, right then and there. That should have been, okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to date some local women. I planned for us to be engaged for about two to three years before marriage so we could truly know each other before tying the knot. That is the first smart thing you've done in this entire courtship with this woman. What you should have done was waited two to three years on top of the 14 months that you were together with her to pop the question. Because in that time period, you would have seen who she was. But I saw who she was from your first encounter with her. When she composed herself an hour later, she said she needed time and then began to intensify the physical nature of her relationship. Needed time? 
Again, lack of experience, desperation, why he put up with this shit? I mean, look, no. At this point, no, if you're not enthused, no. However, we agreed we wouldn't progress to sex, largely because I held that boundary, even though she tried to breach it a few times. Well, you're sticking to what's important. Yeah, I'll give you that. I met with her father six weeks later, who was delighted about the engagement. Oh, I'm sure the pastor was. He wants to make sure she solidifies her rededication with Jesus and gets a husband. And he could see, obviously, I'm sure he knew you were a virgin. So he's thinking, yes, hallelujah, this guy can help fix her. I'm pitching that fucking skinny ass bitch from Footloose, that hell, that little Hellraiser. Yes, I saw Footloose. Most of you have seen Footloose. Anyhow, the pastor's daughter. Oh, and why they picked that girl, right? That movie. I mean, every time I, when I see that, I'm like, oh god, Kevin Bacon must have been like, fuck, this chick's ugly. <laughs> Ugh. You all know I'm talking about the movie. Foot, you don't know what I'm talking about Footloose. Gonna go watch, watch enough of it to see the skinny chick who's the, the preacher's daughter. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyhow. Uh, she then officially said yes, and about a month later, I changed the description of her on my website from being my girlfriend to being my fiance. Do you mean like Facebook? A few days later, she called me in a rage as someone in her church asked her about her wedding because they seen it on my website. In a rage? She's furious that you're happy to announce the world that you're, en you're engaged? I thought you are engaged. She ordered me. Ordered? Really? She ordered me to take the description up and change it back to the fiancé, to girlfriend, because she didn't want gossip being spread. Lack of experience and desperation. Guys, see, I, I know, who, for the, whatever, how many of you are left at this point, because this guy's making you want to scream, he's compliant. He's desperate. These are all things that turn off a woman. I have to point these things out. Bro, where are your balls? Where is your self-respect? Because you, you really, I'm sure you can get other women, at least locally. I did, and we remained long distance. Smack! Okay, Mr. Nice Guy, let's see where this gets you. Over the next two years, work intensified. I was working 100 to 110 hours a week. Holy shit. But unfortunately, I lost my job. She was there for me during this time, but it was difficult for me to find a new comparable job. I came to her town to surprise her on her birthday, and at church that Sunday, her father publicly described me as a friend of my daughter. Now even the pastor, you're not even good enough for the pastor? How many signs, I'm, I'm assuming you're a religious guy, how many signs does the Lord have to give you that this isn't going to work? This girl's not it. Now her father, the pastor, this is her friend, you think this, this is my future son-in-law. You think you'd be enthusiastic. About a year later, even though we were still engaged in long distance, she started becoming slightly more argumentative at times. You mean she's being bitchy? More than usual? Where does that come from? Lack of respect. And guess what? No girl respects a guy who's desperate. Puts up with who puts up with all her crap. Kisses her ass. There are themes to these stories, gentlemen. My parents seem to initially initially like her, but over the years were increasingly telling me they didn't approve of her, as my sister who never agreed with my parents on anything. Again, another sign from the Lord. Nope. This is the best looking pussy ever came your way, even though you weren't actually getting taking advantage of the pussy. Shortly afterwards, at this time three years engaged, I received an email from a woman I didn't know stating she saw my website and that your girlfriend is cheating on you with my husband. I don't think this is bullshit. Who was a security guard at the hospital. Back to the whole hospital thing. The stereotypes. It seems so outlandish to me that I chose not to believe it. Smack! What, your perfect angel who treats you so well, who's so enthusiastic about your engagement, could ever cheat on you, who had a wild time in college? Do you find that hard to believe? Bro, where were your mentors growing up? I'm guessing you didn't have any. How are you so naive? I asked my fiance directly, and she mentioned they knew each other, but that the woman who emailed me had caused problems before, and there was nothing to worry about. And I believed her. Smack! We expect her to tell you the truth, really? 
But notice that, that that year, that instead of seeing each other every four months, that had become increasingly longer since we'd seen each other. So you're now seeing each other maybe once every, what, six months? What the hell's the point? When I saw her three months after the email, despite being happy to see me, first time in eight months, eight months, her mind seemed to be elsewhere the first few days until she eventually resembled the person I fell in love with by the end of the week together. I maintain my boundary of no premarital sex, which she adhered to despite residing with me for the week. You didn't see her in eight months? What the hell's the point, bro? When I drove her to the airport, she said she'd see me in two months, which she then subsequently canceled a month later. Of course she did. Bro, she's an asshole, but I can't entirely blame her for behaving towards you like all this because just your behavior past you I'm assuming you've gotten better. Past you is just pathetic. There's no other way to describe it. I was to receive word of an opportunity a month later about returning to the job track that I lost. Unfortunately, the position did not materialize, and three weeks later, shortly after thanking me for the Valentine's gifts I bought her, and nearly four years into our engagement, during a conversation, she said, we need to take marriage off the table. Shocker. She also mentioned she had some nail discomfort that wasn't going away, for which she was scheduled to see her doctor. Now keep in mind this. You've barely seen each other in four, in the five years you've been together. The one, the 14 months you were, in, you were exclusive, and the three years or four years into your engagement. You barely see each other. I mean, you expect, you really think that she's just sitting around waiting for you? I mean, come on here. A decent person would have broken up with you a long time before, but she probably figured, okay, he'll be making all that money in six years. Remember he mentioned that I'm going to be making way a lot more money because of the job I'm going for and all that. A week later, she called me in a hysterical state because the doctor told her that, that the swab of her nail revealed the cause of the discomfort was, wait for it, herpes. She was also mentioned her brother had urged her not to tell me. Although I still didn't believe she'd been cheating on me. Really, dude? I assume the herpes came from her lifestyle before we met. <laughs> this and to combine with her recent desire to take marriage off the table led me to make a difficult decision to end our relationship. Hallelujah. You know, God is up in heaven like about fucking time, my son, my child. Now you're ending it with her? Well, finally. Uh... As I did, she pleaded with tears and wailing to not do this. That she loved me, and we could make it work. Oh, for God's sakes. No, she loves that paycheck that she's expecting you to have in time. That's about it. What the, get the fuck out of here. I told her that her wanting to take marriage off the table was essentially a deal breaker, especially since we hadn't seen each other, and this is now five months since we last seen each other, and this latest news was the final straw. My God, man, you wasted... Five fucking years of your life with this broad when you could you could have met probably a couple other contenders that actually were better people nearby, but all this to, to her desperation, lack of experience, and I also think that you just had no self esteem, no self worth, not a good mentor growing up. These are why this is why it's so important to have those things. So, since you didn't uh, didn't want to uh, take marriage off the table, I didn't think you'd view this view that as the end of our relationship and promised to see me the next month and that she'd already booked plane tickets. Well, isn't it amazing you back away and say this is over and all of a sudden she's desperate to see you and now she's booking plane tickets to see you. Obviously, you were always coming to her. I wished her well, but, but said we were done. She promised to return the engagement ring, but shocker, she never did. <laughs> I knew there was no way in hell. She went off to the local pawn store, got whatever she could for that, and probably used that money to help pay the rent for some loser that she's hooking up with. Putting the pieces together several years later, it made sense that she started cheating on me around the time when I lost my job. No, bro, she didn't start cheating on you when you lost your job. She che has been cheating on you from day one. The second you went away to start your new job and you were now exclusive after one whole month of knowing each other, she was probably hooking up with the security guard, the male nurses, the doctors, the fucking parking lot attendants, the, man, the guy that works in the cafeteria, anybody else I could think of at the hospital. There's no way. 
This is the wild girl rededicating herself to God. Yeah, no, she's been rededicating herself to Dick all along. Come on, man. I, I, I'm I, not going to let that slide. I'm sure you losing your job didn't help, but still. Look at her behavior. Look at her past. Come on here. Even looking up at the time of the herpes infections put the likelihood of her latest transgression around the time the new job position failed to materialize. Her frustration with my celibacy led to her get herpes from the man that she was cheating on me with. As the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, verse 23. Uh, yeah, I'm sure the celibacy thing was hard, you know, because obviously she wanted to have sex. And she certainly was having a lot of it. But uh, still, if she truly loved you, and by the way, one month of knowing you is not enough time to truly love you. I share this story so that others don't ignore the red flags that I did. Well, guys shouldn't ignore the red flags, but they need to know what the red flags are. That's why I point these things out. Even if you commit to no sex with her marriage, as God directs in the Bible, it doesn't mean that she will keep her word. Even if she's a pastor's daughter, especially if she's the pastor's daughter. As naive as I was, and I'm afraid you still are, my friend, and need work. My decision to interpret her request of taking marriage off the table after four years being engaged with me as the end um, was the right one. Score another for your mantra about, about the things women pull when you give them certainty that they don't deserve. I agree with that one. Okay, you learned that one. When you give women certainty and they don't deserve it, that's when bullshit happens. I, that is one of the most common the most common themes to all these stories when guys have been royally taken advantage of and screwed over by women as the guys have no backbone. They have they don't respect themselves. They act like doormats. And one of the things that doormats do is they give the women certainty. The women don't know darn well that guy ain't going anywhere because I'm the best in your situation. You gave her certainty, the fact that she was your first kiss. She was the longest relationship you had beyond six weeks. Your fourth girlfriend, the way you rushed into everything, the re agreeing to be exclusive, even though you live 1,200 miles away, whatever the hell that was, that gave her certainty you're that guy that you're not going anywhere no matter what. She could do anything, say anything, and look at her behavior through the whole story. Again, she's an asshole, but bro, you didn't help yourself. And I, and I, and maybe you don't, may not like how I'm reacting to this, but... I wouldn't be doing you a favor if I just made her out to be the villain and you didn't do anything wrong to fuck up. Guys have to learn from these stories I share. I mean, you know, ill will. I'm trying to help you, but, and I know I'm very blunt sometimes, but seriously, man. Or as Jesus Christ said, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Matthew 7, verse 6. Thanks to keep up the good work. Well, bro, I appreciate you writing it. And I'm sure you had to know in some way how I'd respond and how a lot of guys that are still here, bless you for those that are still here, would respond in the comment section. But so, bro, I'm not quite sure how long ago this was. I'm assuming this was several years ago. So let's review where you went wrong. You rushed into a relationship with her too soon after a month. Bare minimum, you should wait five or six months to get to know a girl dating before you actually are absolutely in an exclusive relationship. You need to get to know them. You don't do long distance relationships, especially after one month of dating, for God's sakes. When she was, you know, and I didn't hear anything about her going to see you, I might add. And then when you finally propose, you don't propose to a woman after only knowing her 14 months. That's insane. You doing all this gives them certainty that she hasn't earned yet. All right. Then when you, when you actually propose and she runs away or freaks out or whatever you described it, that I tell you everything. And then just keep rewarding her bad behavior. And, and, I, I, and I'm sure there's plenty of other things that were going on that she was doing that was as clear as day by her behavior that she wasn't into you. It's okay if you're a virgin by choice, that's your business. I got no problem with that, but it will be challenging for you because there are women out there, healthy relationships, they want to have sex, period, okay? Her her situation was obviously college, hookups and one-nighters and everything. You know, in my opinion, look, reality is reality. 
these guys nowadays, they expect to find a pretty girl has all, everything's perfect on the checklist and she's a virgin and all that. Good fucking luck. <laughs> Good fucking luck in the 2020s here in the West. I got no problem that you're a guy in your 20s, like you, like you were when you met her and you met a gal who all was great. A kind person has a lot of things that you like. But wasn't a virgin, but only because maybe she had three boyfriends since fucking junior high or high school and say she was in her mid-twenties then and they didn't work out for whatever reason. And But, you know, eventually in time she slept with him, had a healthy relationship with him. Okay, that's not the end of the world. That's not, in my opinion, a big deal. But that's different when she was sleeping with guys that she loved and cared about and was committed to and things didn't work out because in life things don't work out always versus... The carousel rider in college who is having contests with her sorority girls or other girls and hooking up with more guys that the Watson computer can't calculate. The, no, no, don't want that. But the gal that just with guys he's relationships with. So it's going to be a challenge for you guys that are virgins that if you especially one, because, because the girl's going to want to have a hook up, wants to sleep with you, a guy that she loves, but also that uh, good find of finding your gal like that. But my, my friend, if you had a lot of the qualities that I'm trying to help guys develop and handle yourself right, you will meet a girl that won't, that won't be the end of the world to, you know, but with all the mistakes you made, even a good gal is going to be turned off. That's the thing, the way you're behaving and, and rushing into things and, and the, the, the countless mistakes you made, even the good ones will be repelled by your behavior. I hope you understand that. So, bro, you need to work on yourself. You need to really dig down deep why, and ask yourself, why was I that rushing into things? Why was I so desperate? Why did I do this? And figure it out. Really do some soul searching. And I'm sure with my help in this video and things I said and some good soul searching, you'll figure it out so you don't make those mistakes again. Because you didn't say you're married now, and obviously you want to be married and have a kid and all that type of stuff. Okay, that's fine. But look at all those years you wasted with her. I don't want you to waste, do this again and make the same mistakes. Because next thing you know, you're going to be 80 years old, still a virgin. And by then you can't get a heart on, no matter how much Cialis or Viagra you take to, to, to have children. So work on yourself, figure out where you went wrong, and hopefully you can learn your lesson. But I'm glad at least you kicked her to the curb. Good for you on that. You did that right. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Give this guy some common sense, guys. He needs some help. I know you're going to be very tempted to tear him apart, and that's your business. You're allowed to, but but still, let's give this guy some pieces of advice where he went wrong, and hopefully he doesn't make that mistake again. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. Now, catch you next time.